Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the matinee cliffhanger-inspired world of Indiana Jones with four fantastic guests, and now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as shop our selection of personalized autographs, all of which are available now at GalaxyCon.com. So without further ado, let's grab our whip, put on our hat, and see who we find. Our first guest is a producer whose amazing body of work includes Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And today he joins us as the associate producer and later a full producer of Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and The Last Crusade. Please welcome Mr. Robert Watts. Hello. Hello, Robert. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm thrilled to be here, and I hope there are lots of people watching and that they can get something out of this. Well, I, I certainly I certainly look forward to it. It's I uh, got a chance to host you on stage a few years ago. That was a delight. I'm so glad to have you here on this forum. Glad to see you joining us today in good spirit. Thank you very much. I remember you, and I remember the fun we had at that time. Oh, well, let's see what kind of fun we can cook up today. What do you say? You bet. <laughs> Great to have you, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next Thank guest. You. Our next guest is an actor whose body of work includes the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, Absentia, Hot Fuzz, and the original British version of House of Cards. Today he joins us to discuss the role of rogue archaeologist René Emile Balak. Please welcome Paul Freeman. Hi there. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Patty? I am doing well. Uh, great to see you again, as always. And I said this a couple of years ago. I'm a huge fan of your total body work, and I will. I, I'm a huge fan of the Dogs of War. Oh, <laughs> and I know that that film had, a, had an impact on, on your life as well. It certainly did. My wife is sitting in the next room here, who I met during that movie. Uh, please give her my regards. I really enjoyed her performance in the film as well. Great, thank you. Now, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Indeed. And our next guest, he is an actor whose credits include Wonder Woman, The Sandbaggers, and Barry Lyndon. Today he joins us to discuss the role of Colonel Herman Dietrich. Please welcome Wolf Kohler. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah. It's Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Kohler here. Hey, yes, yeah, no, sorry. Not a very at all. Nice, uh, nice to be here. Thank you to, for asking me. Oh, yes. Yeah, so good. Thank you for joining us today, Tay Hare. How are you doing in your part of the world? Okay, yes, it, it stopped raining at the moment. It's, it's really good. It's getting a little warmer day by day. And uh, yeah, people seem to kind of start waking up and uh, preparing for tomorrow's big events by uh, going in every op open door they can find. <laughs> Absolutely, it's very fair. Well, Wolf, they, thank you for joining us here today. And um, again, uh, I, I really, really enjoyed uh, Barry Lyndon, uh, your performance in that. So icy, so sinister, and all it was was just a card game, but you elevated that scene and, of course, got a chance to work with uh, Stanley Kubrick. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And next, he is an actor whose career has encompassed several fandoms, including Star Wars, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Quatermass, Doctor Who, and James Bond. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of villainous industrialist Walter Donovan. Please welcome Mr. Julian Glover. Hello, hello, hello. Good <laughs> afternoon. And thanks for asking me to do this. Uh, it seems it's going to be rather an interesting thing, interesting thing to do. Um, can I just clarify something that Wolf just said? Uh, for your your viewers, uh, tomorrow is the great day for the lessening of the restrictions, the COVID restrictions in the United Kingdom. Kingdom. Ah. So that's why we're all rather excited about tomorrow, because we'll be actually be able to go into a cafe tomorrow and have a meal. So, <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, he, he, here's tears to the advance of medical science. Then, and uh, <laughs> congratulations! I I hope you all get to go back to your favorite restaurants and eat dineries and and enjoy. So, and thank you so much for spending this day with us today, Julian. Great to see you again. Glad to see you here in good health and in good spirit. Yep, I'm fine. Uh, Seem to have got through it all right so far. Battling on. Uh, that's the only thing to do, really, isn't it? Battle on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> on. 
<laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Um, we are looking forward again to the day when we can get a chance to host you on our physical stages and get you all back in front of your fans. In the meantime, we have this electronic forum. We are so glad to have you here. And I just want to say on behalf of myself and behalf of our, our audience, I want to express my gratitude for your contributions, not only to the Indiana Jones series, but for your total body of work. You've, I've, I've enjoyed all of your guys' works for so long. I thank you for your talents. I thank you all for your professionalism. And I thank you all for your performances. In Indiana Jones and Paul, Wolf, and Julian, you have another common denominator. You all made appearances on a show very dear to my heart, QED. In the early '80s, uh, uh, the, uh, the the cyberpunk sort of with uh, yeah the Victorian Victorian adventure series. Yes, yeah. so, is that with with Sam Waterston? Yes, it was with, well done, Paul. Yes, that we we had great hopes of that. Uh, in that, I was a different character every single episode, and we were planning well in advance, but the show was a complete flop, and uh, <laughs> they didn't repeat it. Which yeah. Was bad. It was going to have made my name that one, so uh, that's why I haven't, that's why I haven't got a name. <laughs> well, yeah, a name of my heart. So, well, gentlemen, uh, before we go to audience questions, I just want to throw this out: what for each of you has become the best memory that you've you've taken from being a part of the Indiana Jones series? Well, I'll speak first as the producer of the shows. Yeah, the Indiana Jones gave us the opportunity to travel all around the world. And I know that on the, the, the three movies that I did in the Indiana Jones series, I went round the world twice and visited many countries. And it was a fascinating experience, not only to have shot in those countries, but also to revisit them and meet the people who actually lived there, the actors, uh, and have a wonderful trip. And I will always keep that close to my heart because it was a wonderful experience. And thank you to everybody, to George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and all the cast and crew of those movies that allowed me to have such a great time those years later. Thank you. Ple pleasure, pleasure was ours. <laughs> um, shall I go next? I just want to say that it it made an enormous difference to my career and my life, I think. Impossible to say now what would have happened without it. But one one very uh, remarkable memory was I was having trouble getting into St. Petersburg Airport a few years later. Until one of the officials there, when I thought they were going to deport me, suddenly said, weren't you in Raiders of the Lost Ark? And everything cleared up. And I was allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, uh, Julian. What's uh, your takeaway from uh, from Indiana well, Jones? Lo lots, of, lots of things. I mean, it was first of all, um, it was completely nepotistic that I got the part at all. Um, I happened to live next door to Robert Watts, literally next door, and it was <laughs> I was only in the Star Wars movie. Um, which I was, first of all, before Indiana Jones, um, because of Robert Watts. He literally we were in our garden, literally next door in our gardens, um, when he poked his head over the fence and said, I'm just about to do this, the, another Star Wars movie. Oh, yes, I said, mm, jolly nice. And he said, do you want to be in it? I said, oh, well, yeah, thanks very much indeed. And without further ado, I was in it. So that's complete nepotism and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade uh, once again Robert Watts suggested me but for the part of the German colonel and um, uh, which was wonderfully done by Michael Byrne fantastic face he has and then uh, and I went up for that part and didn't get it but what I did get was Walter Donovan I, which I simply couldn't believe I got it but I did get it and it's all Robert Watts's fault I'll say one more one more thing. I, actually, on the movie, we we done a long sequence in a desert, and um, it was extremely uncomfortable and hot, and uh, like like these things are. And at the end of the day, I was playing an American. Um, at the end of the day, Steven Spielberg, bless his heart, came over. Bless his heart. More than that, my God, what we owe him, eh? Um, uh, came over and said, Julian, uh, you're 
American action is so good, you know. Um, you'll never stop making American movies after this. <laughs> I've never made another. <laughs> <laughs> I told my agent this the other day, and he said, oh, we better put that to rights. I said, a bit late now. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, to your absolute credit, it was a very convincing accent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. You got yeah, a little bit of that drawl in it, you know, so very good, very good. So, uh, Wolf, uh, what was your, what's your favorite memory to come from Indiana Jones? Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's difficult, of course, to, to pick out things from three months filming, um, but but uh, I was I was very impressed by the uh, start off from Luton uh, on the first of June, nineteen eighty, I think, when we all together flew down to La Rochelle in France for all the boat stuff, <coughs> and uh, Steven Spielberg during the flight just went around the cabin and talked to everybody and the actors and <coughs> excuse me, telling them or telling me how he thought uh, the character should be done. And uh, he, I, I, <coughs> I apologize. Hello? Yes. I'm a, we're, we're doing the show right now. We'll call you back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that, that's right. <laughs> it's been taken up upstairs, actually. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry. sorry about that. Sorry. I should have. And anyway, that was absolutely, uh, that, that was a great, great introduction into the working of, of uh, Steven Spielberg, very, and, and uh, uh, very collaborative, very friendly, and uh, knowing... Look, I said I'm doing the show right now. I got to call you back. And, knowing, <laughs> and uh, um, knowing as well that, that ev everybody... Every, every department of the whole pro production was absolutely was occupied by so many wonderful, wonderful and 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 first class people, <clears throat> and and uh, Robert I think saved my life when I uh, clambered from from a, a little boat onto the big boat, mm. and I think it was quite quite rough and uh, and and Robert helped me with his strong arms getting getting up to to the boat and uh i don't know it's just 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 every, everything was really so well so well done and and uh, i uh just want to point out that i did not i did not get sick in the desert hotel everybody seemed to be really you know, uh, uh, telling stories how, oh, I was so sick, oh, I didn't, I don't know if it was just the, the, the just the right calibration of alcohol intake in the evenings or what, but I, I kept, kept clear of that. And uh, just o overall, again, that, that everybody in there, they were so good, the people, everybody. I remember, it. can I say another thing? Of course. Yeah. Um, um, when we first got out to Spain, we did a sequence in Spain, um, and uh, every pretty well everybody on the first morning of the shooting was late, and it was because the hotel didn't have a very good system. Okay, so but we were late, and that's very bad indeed. The next morning, no, the next evening, by all our beds, put there by Robert Watts personally, was an alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you forgot that. There you go. <laughs> I'll be back. I just pull the telephone. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> Robert, I can I can see you the day before winding them all up. <laughs> you know, so, all right, this one goes to Julian. This one goes. In. <laughs> so no uh, after that. So I think, uh, even, I, I think even Sean Connery was late that first morning. Uh, and he was punctilious. Yeah, he was. He was. So, so out of curiosity, uh, for our actors, and Robert, you might have been citing this too, uh, your character's demise was supernaturally grisly and stuff. Uh, did you have to, did they take impressions of your faces to do that? Or did they just sort of do a, a sculpt of, of you and work it from there? 
Well, I'll tell you if you like. Um, yes, no, very definitely. We went, I, well, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't think anybody else needed it. Um, I went about a month before down to the studios and they made a, a death mask of me and um, a plaster of Paris. And they used that for all the modeling, which went into my disintegration later. And very, very uncomfortable couple of days putting them all on and taking them all off and blowing them up and all sorts of things which Stephen did a fantastic job of cutting through to make it into what it was that came, what yeah. we saw. And um, so that was fine. At the end of the movie, um, uh, the props department brought this thing over to me, by, by which time it had, I was about 185 um, on, the, on the model. And, um, I, couldn't act any, I couldn't act a skeleton after that, so I didn't do that. Um, but I just I said, do you, want, do you want this? I said, oh, well, thank you. Yes, why not? So I took it home and I took it in and, and uh, held it up to Ilo when I came and said, look what I got. She said, oh, Christ, <laughs> put that out of the house. That's horrible. That's disgusting. I don't want to see looking like that. Put it in the garage. I put it in the garage. Okay, a few months later, we were clearing out the garage, you know, like you do. And, um, and I said, oh, no, I've come across this. And she said, oh, Julian, this is so awful. Bin it, bin it, bin it. So I binned it. Oh. Okay, about 10 years later, I was doing a convention, I think it was in Atlanta. Uh, I think it was. And I was talking to one of the dealers out there, and I was telling him this story, because he was asking about memorabilia. And I said, I'll let that go down the bin. He said, you binned it? I said, yes, it's in some rubber stump somewhere. He said, if you had that now, I'd give you $35,000 for it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Another reason why I don't have a name. Uh, <laughs> more, more of the story. If you, if you end up with any props or anything, never throw it away. <laughs> it's absolutely never so, throw anything away. So, Paul, did they make a, a life mask for you before they blew up Belloc's head, or did they just sort of? Well, it was the same thing that Julian had. It was some sort of. I don't think it was. I don't think the first application to your head was a plaster of Paris. It was some sort of pink silicon thing that I had first of all, and then they made a whole plaster thing, which you then had fitted on. It had straws up your nose so you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very uncomfortable, and as the plaster set, it got very, very heavy. I remember your neck had to be propped up because yeah. the tendency was to weigh your head. <laughs> yeah. Strangely, I just, very hot too. I just this week for another project had to go and have another head done. I assumed the same thing would happen. I mean, that the last one I had done must have been over 20 years ago. Now it's all done with cameras and green screen and stuff. Yeah. I sat in a room for two minutes while 60 cameras around me took a picture. And then yeah. they go away and make the head from that. So it's all got much pleasanter. It was a very unpleasant experience, but somewhere I do have my uh, Mighty Morphine Power Rangers head, if I could ever find it. I'll have to see if I can auction it if I do, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know several Mighty Morphin fans that would love to take a crack at that. <laughs> so absolutely. And uh, Wolf, did you have to sit down and get your face molded? Yeah, yes, yes, and in the, uh, in the in the manner that that Paul described very very well, his first description of the actual physical mask put on, and. Uh, yeah, I think Paul was first. I think, yeah, I saw his mask when I came into the room in the studio. And uh, it, yeah, it got heavier and heavier. And, uh, um, you know, the straws really kind of were like the last straw, you know, you're holding on to dear life with, with them. But uh, um, they made bloody good use of those masks, you know, of yeah. those heads. Yeah, absolutely. So it was good, yeah. And, um, and Robert, may, uh, you can probably chime in on this too. Uh, Julian mentioned a little bit about when he got to see his character's demise. What was your, uh, Paul and Wolf, what was your reaction to the first, when you finally saw that iconic scene when the head exploding and shriveling up? And Robert, did you happen to be there and see their reaction to it? Well, of course, we didn't see it until we, well, I didn't see it until I saw the final thing all put together. And yeah. it's just an amazing sequence. 
Uh, at the time, I had no experience of doing, um, it wasn't quite green screen that we used then. Robert will have a better idea of what the technique was called then. It was very <laughs> early the green screen. So when all those monsters came out of the arc, uh, the spectres and so on, Stephen was just shouting at us about where to look and how to react. But we had no idea what we were actually seeing. Yeah. No, no, no. He 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 told yes to look to look around, and uh, and and then the, the 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 scream to, I think he he called. We were all different, of course, different styles in, and I, I think he he called my style the kabuki scream. Oh yeah. And, uh, sorry, Paula, interrupted your no 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 I don't your yeah. Flow. Quite often one doesn't see the thing until the final film, things that you do with the blue screen and the, the green screen. Uh, in in, in uh, Star Wars, um, I did a sequence on top of a sort of fighting machine, and it was all done in, on a gantry with a, a mock-up in front of me of a, yeah. of a control panel. And it wasn't until I saw the film that I saw what I was actually driving. It was a sort of great... Um, the... Animal with a, a giraffe. It was a big m m mobile giraffe with legs, uh, which shot at people. And I didn't know what it was until I actually saw the film. I, I was in this gantry, and they moved me about a bit, and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, the, like, and you have no idea what it is. No, I didn't think to ask, and they didn't seem to show me. So uh, I was delighted to find I was I was driving. Mm -hmm. Been very clever. Oh, the giant, uh, the uh, all-terrain transport, the at at, that's what it's called. Yeah, at at. Yeah, yeah. Ba based based off of based off of an elephant, I believe. Robert, you probably know more about that than I would. Um, they're, they're more giraffes than elephants, I really? think. Okay, All right, fair, <laughs> absolutely yeah. fair. Yes, I suppose they are. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you for indulging my questions. I think we're ready to go for our audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one, and this is going to come from Dante, and Dante wants to know, if any of you had a time machine, where would you like to travel back to? Okay, I'll start. I'd like to, uh, assuming uh, that in my back pocket I had all the medication I can get in 2021, um, uh, I would like to have lived Shakespeare's time. Um, that was at the beginning of the 17th century, late. And it was, it was such an exciting time when everything was beginning to happen, particularly in our branch of work, uh, yeah. when theatre began to be really theater, proper theatre, yeah. not people showing off, standing on carts, uh, when proper writing was beginning to happen, not just in theatre, but everywhere. And the arts were really flourishing. Fantastic painters and architects were going on then. and. Um, I remember reading a book about um, Dr. Johnson once, who, when he said when he moved down from Litchfield to London, which he walked the whole way, um, uh, this book said, and the wonderful thing, of course, then was that he never saw any building which was not beautiful. And uh, which continue all, I always think that now when I see these ghastly things that are going up everywhere. I suppose it has to because of the, the increased population, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, I think going all that 150 miles walk, never seeing anything ugly, and um, yeah. except things which men had done, of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very so good. That's, very my, good. That's, that's my offering on that one. Sounds it's a very good. good question, Dante. I think I think I'd be. I, I would have chosen the Shakespearean time for the same reasons as Julian, really, because of the theatre. But failing that, I'd go, I'd be a hundred years later, the sort of time of Samuel Pepys in London. Ah, yes. Although, um, yeah, I would have avoided the plague, but perhaps get swept up in the fire of London, who knows. But I think it would have been a fascinating time, both in the theatre and because of the politics going on. Yeah. Fair. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, where do you think you would go with the time machine? Um, <clears throat> right. Obviously, yeah, Shakespeare days would have been very, very, very in interesting. Um, 
but uh, uh, I, I don't know. I very likely I don't know enough about it. Um, I I had a very very good time uh, in the eighties, not going very far back, and uh, I had. Uh, yeah, linked as well to 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 Shakespeare. We were doing um, a production of Hamlet at the Roundhouse with uh, Stephen Burkhoff, mm. and uh, I played the ghost and uh, the player king and uh, fourteen brass and uh, others. So that was. Um, that that was a very, very in interesting, very interesting year, and of course um, the Raiders as well <clears throat> had in, in 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 that year. So um, I, I'm not saying that I would want to repeat the experience necessarily, but uh, a lot of things were were ha happening at the time. There you go. And uh, there I am. Yes, yes. That was uh, right around the time too. You had you played Andropov in Firefox, another uh, favorite movie of mine from that decade. Oh yes, yes. Got, got to work yes. with Mr. In, Eastwood. In Vienna, we did that in in Vienna. That was very nice. Yes, yes, it is. It is so. And uh, Robert, if you had a time machine. Where do you think you'd go? Where would you go in a time machine? Oh, so I'll give you now? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If I had a time machine, where would I go? I'd be open to travel anywhere, past or future. Correct. I think that would be the most amazing gift, if you like, and the most amazing possibility. And I think that I would consider traveling into the future to see where it was all going. I knew what was happening, but where was it all going? And that I think I would find fascinating. Agreed. Yeah, Very great. good, Robert. Very good. And um, I hope you come back with good news. Thank you. <laughs> I'll let you know if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Dante, thank you. That was a great question to start us off with. What do we have next? Here's one from James. Who inspired you in your career or in your life? Hmm. Well, I was but, always inspired by going to the cinema because I loved it as a kid. And my grandfather, I was lucky enough, was a scr screenwriter. And he wrote uh, scripts for Ealing Studios. And so the combination of him and my love of cinema gave me the opportunity to get involved up to a point in the making of productions, which I then continued when I was grown up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And your, your career is an absolute testament to that passion. Thank you. I am um, Julian here. Um, I, I was definitely there's one person uh, when I was at school, I was about 15 and a new English master came to the school and he revived the tradition. The school was called Allen's College. Um, Edward Allen was a great Shakespearean actor, as I'm sure you guys know, but maybe some of our viewers don't. Um, and he founded a school in South London called Alan and um, I went to that school not when he was alive um, <clears throat> when I was 15 and uh, this English master revived its tradition of doing uh, Shakespeare productions there and he did a production of Julius Caesar Shakespeare's Julius Caesar uh, in the open air in front of the cricket pavilion um, uh, and the fields behind where we used the uh, the school army corps as we called it um, and I played Mark Antony in that. I'd never done anything 
of any sort of acting before in my life. And I was completely and utterly bewildered and captured by that. And I went home and said, I want to do this uh, to my parents. And thank God they were tolerant of the idea. And I owe, that man went on to found the National Youth Theatre of Great Britain, died very young, I'm afraid. Um, but that, that the National Youth Theatre still functions and flourishes. And he, I would not, I should say he's totally responsible for what I am now. So anything you don't like, it's Michael Croft's fault. Michael <laughs> Croft did it. And because uh, I absolutely changed my whole life when I decided to become an actor. So there you go. <laughs> well, I, th I thank him for inspiring you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I thank him every day. Go on, Paul. Um, I was going to say, I have a, I'm continually, I've always been a great fan of jazz. It's my big obsession. And, and it gets more and more as I get older, I find. It's strange. Um, and I find a continual source of inspiration is these jazz musicians who lead terribly difficult, insecure lives, much worse than ours, who nevertheless are con out there still in their 80s, still improvising and still going as far as they can on a sort of tightrope. The great example of this is uh, Sonny Rollins, who's now about 95, 96. By the way, on, um, on um, YouTube, there are wonderful interviews with him. He's become a Buddhist and he's a great philosopher too. But such a source of inspiration, these people who keep going. And that, that's really what one needs, isn't it? A role model to keep going. Yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. Sonny Rollins' body was great. Yeah, jazz is, it's so fascinating growing up. Yeah, I read biographies of uh, people I admired, and one of the common denominators was their love of jazz. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and it was, and I realized too that rock and roll was what it was, but jazz was the <laughs> the intellectual rebellion that was going on in the evolution, especially its heyday in the fifties and the Hepcat eras. So, yeah, I I I'm, I'm with you on on the appreciation of it. Yeah, can some, I just some, add something about Sonny Rollins that yeah. we? To go. There's a wonderful jazz festival in France every autumn called um, every late summer, uh, a town called Marciac, run by Winter Marsalis. And um, we saw Sonny Rollins on his last European tour there, and we'd got there rather late, and he was just beginning. We sat through this extraordinary concert, and it we were rather tired, so we left at the uh, at the end and, and thought, well, that's the best concert we've ever seen. As we drove away, he started up again. It was just the interval. And <laughs> he was about 88 then. And he went it was extraordinary. Yeah. Do, uh, may, uh, may, may I just, just uh, Sonny Rollins, he, he uh, years ago, <clears throat> he probably always takes a big, long sabbatical and uh, I don't know how long it was, the one that, I, that I'm that i referring to, but uh, the result of it was the, the bridge where he, on, on one of the New York bridges, he, he was there, he practiced there for <clears throat> days on end. And it was just with, with him and Jim Hall and I think uh, just the drummer or something, very spare, the whole thing. Yeah. But absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, my, I mean, I'm, I'm like like everybody else. I I used to watch movies quite a bit, and uh, of course, television didn't it didn't exist, so it was in the movie theaters, and that of course is a much more much more impressive in in, in introductions. And uh, when I when I did my my audition for Barry Lyndon. Um, which which I I got very uh, uh, weirdly through Steven Spielberg uh, no, no, no to to uh, um, Berkhoff. We I was in between productions with with him, and I was working in Kentish Town in the uh, in the farm there, uh, uh, the the community farm, doing some carpentry work, whatever building a new ceiling and and I got a phone call 
from Stephen and saying it's the last day, it's the last afternoon for for the Prince of Java in casting. And quickly, you know, go down to Soho to the studio and Jimmy Liggert, the casting director, will take care of you. And and to, to this day, I have no idea how I got that message because it was long, long before my phones or, or any anything. And but anyway, I, I, I got it and and I had the text and I, I read it and it was made and I had a look at it. And I was I was absolutely I was very very surprised. I've never seen myself, I've never taped or done anything like that. And I just saw all these various actors, famous act going through my visage, through my face, through my expressions. And uh, so I think that that was quite a good indication that I was very much influenced by, uh, you know, crafts, craftsmen, and uh, yeah. Anyway, what, 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 whatever. Yes. So that's, and eventually, I, 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 after a few weeks, I was flown to to Dublin and introduced first put into the original costume and everything and then driven to the to the great man and uh, they were just in between two takes and uh, the, uh, the the other the, the, the drum actor was there. So anyway he just he looked he looked at me and all that and he said okay <laughs> and that was it and then off again and then after a few weeks back and the rest is history. <laughs> Very much so. It was, uh, it was a great time to to do the uh, film. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. So, James, thank you. Great question. And a reminder to our audience, if you would like to chat with our guests like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And while you're there, check out our schedule of upcoming events. And uh, let's go ahead. We got time for one or two more. Let's see what we got. Here's one from Henry. If you had the opportunity to be in any other movie franchise, which one do you think you would choose? Hmm. What movies would you be in if you could? Well, I've been in pretty well all of them. The one I haven't been in is Star Trek. Yeah. That's why I'd love to... That would just complete the, the, the set. Uh, too late now, but that's what I'd love to have done. I And, yeah, I, I've i often joked, uh, uh, there's the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, where you can love so. Julian, I've often said, you're that way with, with fandoms, because, again, Quatermass, Doctor Who, uh, everything else, well, yeah, you... You popped yes, into somebody, I but, do, but I didn't do that. I know. Yeah, Star Trek is 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 the is the big fish you didn't didn't toe into, but it can still happen. Star Trek is still out there, so. Okay, so. Right. Ah, never say never say never, especially in this business, as we all know. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, if you could uh, jump into another another fandom of some kind or a franchise would it be no you'll, you'll have to ask somebody else first i'm still ruining. okay <laughs> no problem uh robert if you could have uh, worked in your capacity on any other uh, uh film franchise series is there one you think you would have liked to have uh, taken a taken a crack at <clears throat> well yes i'm sure there are a lot uh, i was fortunate to work on some amazing uh, series of franchise movies that, that we made over the years. And I regret none of them, and I'm glad I did them, and I would do them all over again, given the opportunity. To find something new and pluck it out of the air, that's very difficult, because I don't know. I don't know what might have happened, what may have happened, it's all written in the Book of Life. And that, I guess, you have to live through to really find yeah. out what it is. Indeed. So I believe in all of it, yeah. which means I believe in none of it, <laughs> which means I believe in all of it. And 
at that point, I say good night because what else have I got to offer? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can say goodbye. You can say goodnight, but don't say goodbye yet, because uh, we 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 enjoy having you around. And uh, well, I will say this much. Um, and along with everybody else in the entire universe, we certainly wish we could have seen another Roger Rabbit. But of course, that's 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 another panel for another day. And the issues of the rights and everything else is labyrinthian at best. But uh, in our hearts, certainly would have loved to see you uh, uh, give us another adventure uh, in that series. Yes. Yes, I would have liked to have done another one of those. Because Robert, it was really you see Bob Hoskins again. Robert, you're a terrible liar. You lived next door to me and you went through absolute hell with Roger Rabbit. Absolute <laughs> hell. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it was so brilliant, because you were so fantastic on it. Absolutely fantastic on it. You stuck to your guns and said, no, this has got to work like this. And you made it work like that, rather as you did the first Star Wars film. Nobody gives you enough credit for what you've done. And that, no. uh, this is absolutely true. And uh, uh, Roger Rabbit was entirely because of you, keeping going on and not allowing things to happen that shouldn't happen. So there, I've said it now. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. Is that Julian? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. absolutely. I yeah. hope that everything that I've done and that you've done and the things we've done together have coalesced in a way to produce the best possible result. That's all I could say. Good, thank you. It, it has. It mustn't be a congratulations society. This, uh, I just wanted to say that because um, people don't give you enough credit. Or they do, people in the business do, but people outside the business don't know what, what your contribution is, apart from no. giving alarm clocks to people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely agreed. So, uh, well, if you could be part of any uh, 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 franchise, either film or television, uh, is there, is there was there a series as a like, boy, I would have loved to have had a part in that. Um, yes, yes. It, it it would have been Star Wars, but of course I didn't know at the time that Star Wars existed. But my my agent at the time in the seventies was uh, God. He was the ex very well known ex uh, uh, band leader. Hmm. So I can't I can't remember his name at at the, at, at the moment. And he he sent me along to. Soho Square to the 20th century building uh, where I met um, the, big, the big George and and uh, I had asked the agent, what, what is it about Star Wars? What is it? And he said, oh, you know, stars, you know, on the lapel here, it's, you know, generals kind of, you know. So with that very, very anemic knowledge i went in there and uh george was sitting behind the huge desk and i think he was doodling or whatever anyway we we had a chat or not chat or he asked me and i answered and, and nothing came of that but uh well well here I'm here we i'm not complaining I'm he, he, you obviously made a good enough impression that he Is kept that you in mind for raiders Is, so no, I think I did. I did that because I was in a Kubrick film, and because the, the Lady Vanishes that was released actually the year before in '78 or or, or, or '79, and yeah. I played a character there with a uniform and you know, sure, probably the right characteristics. So, sure. I think that was there you go. So, all right, Paul. We've got Indiana Jones. We've got. Thank you for allowing me to think about it because I, I think I really have come up with something. I'm an absolute um, fan of the Thin Man series of William Powell and Myrna Loy. And oh uh, I would love to have played in some of those scripts. The scripts were so witty. <laughs> There were so many wonderful dry martinis being drunk all the time. <laughs> yes. you, you look at it now, you'll see that William Powell, who I believe wasn't a drunk, 
um, a very fine actor, but he plays him as being completely drunk while he solves all these mysteries. It's a wonderful series and ought to be reissued in its original form. Uh... Uh, when, he, when he comes out of the picture, uh, the whole picture of the glasses, uh, so who needs more ammunition? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I made a, I, I made a Nick and Nora uh, reference at a conversation last night, and of course, all, all the kids looked at me with blank faces. So I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, but that, that's a me. I saw somebody with a, this is apropos of nothing at all, but I saw somebody with a little dog yesterday, and I thought, Dog reminds me of something. And now, having mentioned that, I've suddenly realized what it was. It was that dog. What was that dog's name? Oh, crumbs. Astrid? Yeah, I think I... Anyway, it doesn't matter at all. But it's a wonderful series. Absolutely. I, I absolutely concur. And Henry, that was a wonderful question. And... GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast and producers of the Indiana Jones films, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, please check out our schedule of upcoming events just like this one. Gentlemen, this has been an absolute delight to spend this time with you. Any final words for our audience before we go? See you at the next GalaxyCon, I hope. Oh, yes. If there is one. There will be. Oh, oh yeah, there, great, there great will be. You. Yeah. There will be. There absolutely will be. Gentlemen, it's been my absolute privilege to serve you all again. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you so much for all your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. If you're, in, if you're in the UK, enjoy your day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>